It initially started like one of those unfounded, sensational reports from the rumor mills, later confirmed to be true to the utter disillusionment of Nigerians. The retired Vice Admiral Ohai Michael Ahibe's very eventful and high achieving surgeon on earth, which began on September 29, 1946, was brought to an unceremonious end on the 20th of October 2013. The information further revealed that the late admiral had succumbed to an ailment diagnosed as throat cancer, which had effectively sidelined him from the public glare for a long while. It was a very rude, shocking, and devastating piece of news to his entire family members, the Navy community, to which the late admiral gave over three decades of unblemished and meritorious service, and indeed Nigerians from diverse spheres of life whose lives he had touched during his lifetime. The common thread and consensus of opinion in the outpouring of tributes which have greeted the passage of retired Vice Admiral Ahibe is that he was a distinguished officer, principal gentleman, deeply committed to the enhancement of the enduring values of education. The late Admiral was also described as a consummate family man who exhibited uncommon love and affection to his wife and children, despite the very busy schedule of his assignment. Retired Vice Admiral Ohai Michael Ahibe carved a reputation for excellence in all his endeavors early in life. He showed leadership qualities, which earned him the admiration and respect of his colleagues and all those whom he interacted with, either at close or distant quarters. The late retired Vice Admiral Mike Ohai Ahibe was exceptionally brilliant, emerging as the best graduating student in the 1983 course of Command and Staff College Judge in Kaduna State. His impressive tour of duty in the Nigerian Navy included serving as commanding officer of the flagship Navy vessel NNS Obuma in 1985, Chief Staff Officer of Naval Training Command, Director of Naval Plans, Policy and Budget, Director of Navy Faculty of the Command and Staff College Judge, Director Naval Training Command. The late retired Vice Admiral Ohai Mike Ahibe was also the flag officer commanding the Eastern Naval Command of the Nigerian Navy. The late Vice Admiral Ohai Mike Ahibe, at the age of 47, back the highest position attainable in his professional career when he became the Chief of Naval Staff to preside over the nation's maritime force at the very apex. Between 1985 and 1986, Vice Admiral Ohai Mike Ahibe served as the military governor of Ondo and Lagos states, leaving behind an enviable record of achievements, which include, among others, the construction of the Teslim Balogun Stadium in Lagos and the building of the ultramodern Lagos House, Alausa Ikeja. On the 9th of June 1998, the late Vice Admiral Ohai Mike Ahibe, GCON, was appointed the Chief of General Staff, the highest military position, equivalent to the position of a Vice President under the General Abdusalami Abubakar administration. Although in power for only nine months, the General Abdusalami Abubakar and Ohai Mike Ahibe administration was responsible for the setting in motion of the machinery that led to the political transition program, which ultimately resulted in the transfer of executive power from the military to a new civilian government in May 1999. That ushered in the administration of President Ulusheg Mwabasanjo. Therefore, to all intents and purposes, the General Abdusalami Abubakar administration, supported by Admiral Ohai Mike Ahibe, can be regarded and remembered as one of the main architects of the democratic environment we enjoy in Nigeria today, which has lasted for a whole 14 undivided years. The late Admiral Ohai Mike Ahibe was a holder of a bachelor and master's degree in law. He belonged to a number of domestic and international professional bodies and also held many domestic and international awards. These included the Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger, GCON, 
Nigeria's second highest national honor. He was married to Dr. Mrs. Josephine Ahibe for 39 years, blessed with nine children and many grandchildren. Looked at from all indices, it would be right to say that the late retired Admiral Mike Ahibe lived a very fulfilled and accomplished life, earning an enviable place in the annals of the nation's history, for which his memory will be long cherished and treasured in our minds. It was with such thoughts in their minds that Nigerians from different walks of life, especially from the Navy community, gathered at the naval base at Papa Lagos to begin the first leg of the funeral rites for the late Admiral Mike Ohai Ahibe. The widow of the late Admiral Mike Ahibe, Dr. Mrs. Josephine Ahibe, children and family members, were given the much needed support by their friends. This included Senator David Mark, Senate President, Rear Admiral Pobeni, retired, Ogbeha, as well as the Governor of Lagos State and his wife. The Navy was represented by the top hierarchy made up of the Chief of Defense Staff, Vice Admiral Ola Saad Ibrahim, and the Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Dele Ezelba. There are also serving and retired high ranking naval officers, as well as members of the Nigerian Navy Officers' Wives Association, NOAA. They were there in their legion to support Dr. Mrs. Josephine Ahibe, who was at the time the president of the organization. The corpse containing the remains of the late Admiral Mike Ohai Ahibe, which was draped in the traditional immaculate colors of the Nigerian Navy, was solemnly filed past by everyone in turns for them to pay their last respects to him, to the one popularly called NNS Fearless. <laughs> This went on for some time before the service of songs that featured the performance of songs specially tailored for such reverent events by a choir led by the renowned musicologist Demola Olota. And that set the tone for eulogies and tributes in honor of the late Vice Admiral Mike Ohai Ahibe. Those who reminisced on the life and times of that fearless and unrepentant patriot were Governor Babachino Fashala of Lagos State. All said, on behalf of the government and people of Lagos, I stand here today to salute the service of a patriot who served his people, who served his country. And I can state without equivocation that his contribution to the development of Lagos and the development of Nigeria as a whole cannot be quantified. Once again, um, our condolences are with the children, his wife, and his entire family. And may his soul continue to rest in peace. I was particularly close to Mike because whilst in the Defense Academy, I had initially wanted to join the Navy, but fate later took me to the Army. Yet, there was never a distance between us. From my very first contact during the entrance and the interview to the Defense Academy, we took to each other. He simply called me Dave, and I gave him, gave him the name NNS Fearless a nickname that later trailed him for the rest of his life. Mike was very brave, courageous, compassionate, 
diligent, fearless, patriotic, magnetic, and witty. He was more than a friend and a cosmic to me. Alba Aibe represented honor. He represented grace. He represented hard work. He represented sitting for what he thinks is absolutely correct. He's a freak for correct the radio. He's a freak for many, many things. You see, Admiral Ibe said truth for nothing less but excellence. He was dogged. He has a way of making you say, no, no, you've not gotten there. The tributes of the children and children-in-law of the late Admiral Mike Ahibe, which evoked a lot of emotions among the audience, equally brought out their exceptional brilliance and matured demeanor. Admiral Mike Ahibe and his wife should be very proud to see that their great investment in the children's education and upbringing has yielded very bountiful fruits. In their various submissions, the children all agreed that their father was very loving, caring, disciplined, and the best role model they could have ever wished for, and a perfect companion for their mother. We cannot fight the Lord for deciding when, how, and why he picks us to come and to go. So we will take heart. We will trust and appreciate the fact that he is seated at the right hand of he who gave you to us in the first place and who has now called you home. Our father, our husband, our father-in-law, our grandfather, we would not have wanted that. In fact, he did tell us in his, in his final days, don't cry. Death is but just the end of one chapter. We all die. Take heart. Walk at living a legacy worth celebrating. Another really important thing to know about our father was that he really valued people. Even though he recognized the divisions between people put between themselves, he never really understood why. He didn't care what religion you followed, or what state you were from, or whatever walk of life you came from. And it was something he carried into his public service, and he exemplified in his private life. And so today, our hearts are filled with sadness, but also profound gratitude for the short period you spent with us on earth. We are indeed the poorer for losing you, but certainly the richer, beyond measure, for having had you in our lives. You lived a good life and set an example for us. You've touched so many lives, treating everyone fairly and never hesitating to offer a helping hand when the opportunity arose. Most of all, you are unequivocal in your sense of justice and right, a lingering legacy that endures in the children you've left behind. In the homily, the officiating clergyman echoed all the good dates of the late Admiral Mike Ahibe as an appropriate reference point for everyone to be reminded that no matter the length of our stay on earth, we can only be remembered by the lives we are touched while alive. The recessional hymn finally brought the service of songs for Admiral Mike Ahibe to a close. The Catholic Church of the Assumption Falamon in Ikoi, Lagos, hosted the commendation service for the late Admiral Mike Ohai Ahibe. More friends, relatives, and the colleagues of the former Chief of General Staff attended the service in large numbers. The kernel of the service were rendition of songs of praise to God by the choir and congregational singing, which went on for most of the service.
The children of the deceased read portions from the Holy Bible to bid their father a most emotional farewell. In the homily, the officiating minister looked at death and the lessons the living can learn from it against the backdrop of the unending encomiums and accolades that have attended the demise of the late Admiral Mike Ohai Ohigbe. He concluded that although the sun set for him at a time the world least expected it, the magnificent deeds of Admiral Mike Ohai Ohigbe felt very much among the diverse divides of our country, as carved for him a special place in the minds of Nigerians who would remember him and his family forever. And so he reminded them that God is God not of the dead, but of the living, for to him all men are in fact alive. All men are in fact alive. So when you do not see them again in the world because they have left this physical world, that is not the end of their lives. And so we pray for these Marys of Christ to assist our brother that the Lord will grant him mercy judgment in his kingdom and welcome him to a place of rest and happiness through Christ our Lord. The service featured more songs and the first son of the deceased gave the vote of thanks which brought the service of songs on end and everyone dispersed. On arrival at Benin Airport, the body of Admiral Mike Ohai Ahibe, which was accompanied by his wife, Dr. Mrs. Josephine Ahibe, children, family members, and retired Admiral Poveni, who stood very closely by the family, was received by a large crowd of the people of Edo State, led by Governor Adams Oshomale, the top brass of the Nigerian Navy, and other sympathizers. From there, they headed straight to the Edo State Government House, where, as an illustrious son of the state, who brought a lot of honor and dignity to her, the remains of Admiral Mike Ahigo was laid in state. Prominent indigents of the state, led by Governor Adams Oshomale, filed past it to pay their last respects to him. In his remarks at the short, emotional, and impressive ceremony, Governor Adams Oshomale described the late Admiral Mike Ahibe as a great son of Edo State, whose contributions to both the state and Nigeria will make his memory last very long in the hearts of all of us. He advised the wife and family members to take solace in the fact that his selfless service to fatherland had been appreciated by all. I was surprised to say that I wouldn't be here as the governor of the state if Admiral Hibbe hadn't demonstrated those finest qualities of a senior military commander and a complete gentleman committed to truth. And he not only speak truth to power, he even spoke truth to power. As the body of Admiral Mike Ohai Ahibe arrived in his hometown, Fuga, in their circle local government of Edo State, a place to which he devoted so much of his time on earth, it was clear with the unprecedented crowd of the indigents that came out to receive him that Admiral Ahibe's immense contributions to the development of Fuga and his circle local government of Edo State in terms of roads and infrastructure, which he influenced greatly during his tenure in government were deeply appreciated by his people. In due deference to the age-long and time-respected tradition of the Fuga people, the first place Admiral Ahibe's body, which was received by the eldest person the family was taken to, was the family house, later his own personal house, where he was laid in state to afford more people the opportunity to pay their last respects to him. A wake keeps service was held for Admiral Ohai Ahibe, 
which was attended by the Catholic Archbishop of Archidiocese and other clergymen from different denominations, as well as friends and family members. The choir of St. Teresa's Catholic Church rendered songs while the sermon was preached by the Catholic Archbishop of Archidiocese, in which he admonished the wife and family members of the late Admiral Ahibe to be consoled by the fact that he left worthy legacies they should be proud of, which in fact the whole nation is celebrating. Saturday, the 23rd of November 2013, the day Admiral Ohai Mike Ahigbe was buried. His hometown, Foga, the headquarters of Esako, local government of Edo State, played host to a large number of people that can only be compared to the scenario that played out in 1999 when Admiral Mike Ahigbe was given a hero's welcome back home after he and General Abdul Salami Abubakar had successfully returned Nigeria back to democracy and handed over power to the civilian government led by President Ulushegmo Basanjo. Leading the powerful delegation was Vice President Mohamed Namadi Sambo, who represented President Goodluck Jonathan. Senate President David Mark was heavily supported by distinguished and honorable members of the National Assembly. Former Head of State General Abdul Salami Abubakar and his wife Justice Fatih Abubakar were there. They were joined by Governors Adams of Shomali and Ulushegu Mimiko of Edo and Undo State. Also there to honor their late boss was the Chief of Defense Staff, Vice Admiral Ola Saad Ibrahim, the Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Dele Zoba, as well as top serving and retired high ranking military officers. Chief Tony Aneni led other prominent indigents of Edo State at the church service. The governors of Lagos, Ekiti, and Obor of Lagos were represented. The commendation service for Admiral Ohai Mike Ahibe, which was held at the St. Teresa's Catholic Church, Fuga Edo State, featured a rich array of top flight dignitaries from different spheres of life who had all come to pay their last respects to a great son of Edo State and Nigeria. The church service began as the body of Admiral Ohai Mike Ahigwe was led into the church by the Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Dele Zelba, and some senior Navy officers amid songs. The first and second Bible lessons were taken by the first son and third daughter of Admiral Mike Ahibe. It was indeed the celebration of the very accomplished and fulfilled life of Admiral Ahibe as the choir and different groups rendered rich, soul-lifting and inspiring songs to celebrate him. <laughs> Glowing tributes were paid to the memory of Admiral Ohai Mike Ahibe. Those who spoke included Senator Chris Anyao, who was the chairman of the Senate Committee on Navy. Senate President David Mark spoke on behalf of Admiral Ahibe's course three mates at the Nigerian Defense Academy Kaduna and his first son, who spoke on behalf of family members. And the lost son of Nigeria, who has shared days of hard work, wisdom, Both 
a good and fulfilled life. Indeed, so many good things to so many, and let's enjoy less. It is unique for me because I should say what we know about Admiral Mike Ahige before his own people, before his brothers and sisters, so that they know that the gem they're missing is not just a gem for Fuga, for a new state, but a gem for Nigeria. Ah, yes. We all The service featured more songs and celebration of the life and times of Admiral Mike Ohai Ahibe before special prayers were offered for the entire Ahibe household by the officiating minister. In his sermon, the officiating minister, the Catholic Archbishop of Auchi Diocese, commiserated with the family of the deceased, Edo State Government, and the entire Nigerians on the sad loss of this great officer gentleman who came, saw, and conquered by acquitting himself creditably in all the assignments he was privileged to superintend over during his very short, eventful, and high-achieving surgeon on earth. He admonished all family members to be prepared to carry on with the worthy legacies left behind by the Admiral as a lasting tribute to his memory. Because of the kind of life that our brother and our father, our very dear husband, lived, and the kind of honor that God gave to him to have served this nation and humanity in different capacities, I think that we can worthily reflect on his life and then challenge ourselves so that we may be able to also leave the legacy for those who come after us. In President Goodluck Jonathan's message delivered by Vice President Mohammed Nabadi Sambo, he described the late Admiral Mike Ohai Ahibe as someone imbued with uncommon courage, discipline, and rare intellect, which have all combined to play a defining role in his distinguished career in the Navy and other assignments he was charged with. The President said that although it will be very difficult for the country to get over the loss of such a gallant officer, Admiral Ahibe will live on in our collective memories as a patriot who loved Nigeria with deep passion. Vice Admiral leaves behind a rich legacy of military service, commitment, professional excellence, and outstanding leadership, which impacted profoundly beyond its military constituency from the political and social economic development of Nigeria. I'm confident that his worthy and his sense will continue to inspire the family, the people of the state, and the entire nation to greater dedication of service for our fellow man, for our nation, and our common humanity. The service ended as the body of Admiral Ohai Mark Ahigwe was taken out of the church amid songs with his wife, children, and other family members in tow. Before Admiral Mike Ahigbe's remains were finally interred, a special parade was held in his honor to formally pull him out of the Nigerian Navy. The short but impressive ceremony saw the Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Dele Zoba, some senior naval officers, and special cadets in action. This climaxed with a 21-gun salute to formally send forth the Admiral 
from the Nigerian Navy, to which he gave over three decades of his most productive life in flying colors, emerging as the number one man in the Navy and the second most influential citizen in Nigeria. At the end of the ceremony, Admiral Ahibe's shoes, caps, and ceremonial dress were handed over to his first son. The biography of Admiral Mike Ahibe was read by the Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Dele Zoba, before he was finally interred. May God grant Admiral Ohai Mike Ahibe eternal rest in his bosom, and for his family, we pray for fortitude for them to bear this great loss.